Initially, this was going to be a very different video. My plan was to show you the real world star systems that can be found in Starfield. It turns out though that the game's star systems are not at all accurate. Take for example, Alpha Centauri. This is the closest star system to our own at less than 4.5 light years. On the screen right here, we can see the number of planets and moons that Alpha Centauri has within Starfield. Now this, according to what we know at least, is very, very different to the real world. Here you can see two stars orbiting each other, Alpha Centauri A and B. There's also a third star here called Proxima, and this is within the same star system of Alpha Centauri. Now there are worlds orbiting Proxima Centauri, potentially three worlds in fact. Now at least one of these may have water and is therefore potentially habitable. Either way, you can see this system looks very, very different indeed to what we've been presented with Starfield. And interestingly enough, it turns out that Alpha Centauri is the home system to the game's largest city, New Atlantis. At this point, you may be wondering, well, what's going on with the other star systems out here? How many of these are actually real? Well, it turns out that this is pretty hard to figure out. On the screen right here, we can see a snapshot of the system map, the galaxy map that was presented to us. There's a total of seven different star names on here. Out of those, only three are used today. We've got Sol, well, technically Sol isn't used as a real name today, but nonetheless you get the point, that is our own star system. So we've got Sol, Alpha Centauri, and over on the far right, we've got Porima, also known as Gamma Virginis. You can see right here how they line up in the real world. This is taken from Space Engine at the same three star systems. But let's expand this out a little bit. What we got here is a sphere around Earth of 20 light years. It shows every known star system within that range, in this case, 83 different systems. Theoretically, at least, this should encompass the vast majority of known star systems within Starfield. We can see the Sun right at the center, Proxima and Alpha Centauri a little bit below it. What we can't see is Porima, and that's because that star system is 38 light years away from Earth and therefore out of the range of this particular map. Now, if you're paying attention, you'll notice that Narayan, Cheyenne, Jaffa and Voli do not exist on the real world star map. So two points here, either Bethesda have gone all out sci-fi with the Starfield star map, or alternatively, they've changed the name of some of the systems. And that would make sense, right? After humans go out and colonize those various star systems, very, very good chance that some of them would get renamed. At any rate, I hear you ask, what does any of this have to do with whether or not the planets in Starfield are going to be boring or interesting? Well, it has nothing to do with it, but also everything to do with it. As we've seen, the real world star systems, at least as far as we know, are barren, lifeless and generally empty, not very interesting at all. Starfield, on the other hand, has some very interesting looking planets. We know that many of these, most of them in fact, are going to be procedurally generated, and, well, understandably, this has led to quite a bit of concern out there. Are these planets going to be dull? Are they going to be boring? Procedural generation, unfortunately, has a bit of a bad rep in many quarters of gaming. Or, to be more fair, perhaps, procedural generation has a bit of a bad reputation when it's used on a large scale. When used on a smaller scale, however, it tends not to be too much of a problem. At least, I see very few complaints about that. Bethesda's other titles, for example, Oblivion and Skyrim also both use procedural generation, in this case for terrain features and forests and areas like that. You don't often see too many complaints about it being used for all of that. The real problem tends to come, like I say, when it's used at scale. No Man's Sky, of course, uses procedural generation. This led to a big backlash shortly after launch, all the way back in 2016, where planets tended to be very, very repetitive, as did the wildlife on those planets. Hello Games have somewhat improved it over the years, improving the quality of the planets and the quality of the wildlife as well. In fact, I'd go as far to say as, uh, well, they have significantly improved it, but it still tends to be quite repetitive overall. Another example of procedural generation used at scale is Elite Dangerous. Here we have a full galaxy, the Milky Way, populated with billions, if not trillions, of different planets. Unfortunately, they tend to be very barren. Now, don't get me wrong, Elite Dangerous developers Frontier have done a tremendous job with this technology, reproducing a very much a scientifically accurate version of the Milky Way galaxy, a one-to-one -one copy, no less. But even still, many of the planets are repetitive, barren, and lifeless. There's nothing really to do on each of these worlds. And that, I feel, is ultimately much of the concern when it comes to Starfield. 
Will these worlds be lifeless? Will they be barren? And if not, will they be simply repetitive? Well, here's the thing. There's a load of unknowns at the moment, but there are two things that are very much known. Firstly, this isn't going to be Elite Dangerous. Starfield is not going to be full of scientifically accurate full-scale worlds that are both lifeless and barren. It's also not No Man's Sky, despite all the many comparisons that are going on regarding that right now. And there's a very, very obvious reason why it's not Elite Dangerous and why it's not No Man's Sky. Starfield is not a space game, at least not in the true strict definition of the word. It is, first and foremost, a RPG, a single-player RPG that has a space aspects tied onto it. And this means it exists in a very different genre to Elite Dangerous and No Man's Sky. But why is that even relevant to the number of planets the game has? Well, here's the thing. The content on those planets, and perhaps even the planets themselves, need to, first and even foremost, be focused on RPG content. What does this mean? Well, it means, quite simply, they're an extension of the way the same mechanics work in Elder Scrolls and Fallout. No one really complains about the number of desert areas found in Fallout 3. No one really complains about the number of forests found in Oblivion. Deserts and forests in these games don't serve as the primary content. They're merely an extension, an aspect of the world through which you can explore and go find uh, quests, go find dungeons and other activities. It seems very likely then, at least to me, that the planets in Starfield are merely an extension of this. They're just forests. They're just deserts. They're areas through which you can have random encounters. Todd Howard himself has actually said that. And yeah, sure, he might well be lying about that. He may be exaggerating, who knows. But if so, it would be a very, very odd thing to actually lie about, wouldn't it? After all, if you're going to lie, you wouldn't really just say, well, this area is just a basic area that has random encounters. Not a very good lie, is it? No, it seems more of a case of setting expectations. That said, it's entirely understandable and very, very reasonable, really, that people are being completely wary of many of these claims. It's right to not get too hyped. History has shown us that one for sure. It's also quite correct to express your doubts if you have them. No problems there. I think the important part to remember is whether you're highly anticipating the game, whether you're hyped for it, or whether you have serious doubts about it, well, ultimately, we don't know the answer to those questions, to that speculation. It really is, at least for now, a question of waiting and seeing. What we do know, as I've demonstrated in this video, is that the star systems within Starfield are not realistic, not really in any way whatsoever. They simply don't match their real-world counterparts, and I don't think they have any intention to either. I think this is an important thing to point out, because as we've seen with Elite Dangerous, when you do have realistic planets that match real-world counterparts, then they do tend to be pretty repetitive and pretty boring. On the other end of the spectrum, you do have No Man's Sky, which tends to go pretty wild with, uh, well, with its planets and with its life forms. It seems obvious to me that this is something that Bethesda will be very keen to avoid, if for no other reason that Starfield is very clearly an RPG. And quality RPGs, whether they're the Elder Scrolls series, the Fallout series, or even something like The Witcher or Mass Effect, well, they tend to do a lot of world building and then make sure their fiction remains firmly within the scope of that world building. Personally then, at least from what we've seen right now from what I've known so far, I don't really have any concerns about the quality and variation of the planets that we're going to see. Of course, this is a Bethesda title, so I fully expect to be tons of bugs out there, but as for quality, as for variation, I think that's going to be fine. The real question is what type of gameplay are we going to find on these planets? I think, for me, it's very important not to expect miracles here. We're not going to have a full-on Skyrim world, we're not going to have a full-on Oblivion encounters on every planet we land on. Nope, when landing on a planet, I fully expect it to be just like walking into a forest within Oblivion, or just randomly roaming out into a desert in Fallout. It's a place to have encounters, a place where you may find caves or even dungeons, maybe settlements or outposts, or other small type activity. Of course, I could be completely wrong about all of this, but that too would be completely fine. As I said, not got too much in the way of expectations going in, and I think it's very important to keep that in mind. Yeah, expectations. My expectation then is that Starfield is not a space game, at least not in the strictest sense of the word. However, it does have enough space game elements, at least for me, that it does fit into that category. However, that said, I think Bethesda were very smart here for not promoting the game as a space game. They kept the space side of things very much out of the equation for all the initial reveals, all the initial discussions. And that is very important. There's a very specific reason they did that, 
and it simply is because Starfield is an RPG. At any rate, what do you think about all these planets within Starfield? Do you think 1000 is way too many? Or do you think the number doesn't really matter? Will they get boring and repetitive? Or is it more the better? Will you just love a huge load of selection of areas to go out and explore? Either way, do let me know in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.